So this is the real one. Welcome everyone. <laughs> we hope that the picture is like um, irregular, like um, not upside down or lopsided, but like straight on. And I moved a little bit in front so that I hope that my the sound is a little bit clearer. Please drop us a comment uh, in the section below if sound and picture is fine. I'm here with my laptop and uh, I'll also post the mantra that we're going to sing. Today is the asana clinic um, about the upper body like chest and shoulders, upper back and neck. Um, personally, when I practice yoga that um, influences that area, it's one of the best ways for me to just get this overall feeling of greatness and um, it just feels so great. And I invited again back with me today in Hamsa Television is uh, Andrea and Lise. Um, welcome back again. So happy that you, you. could join. <laughs> okay. So um, <clears throat> let me just find the live streaming. Um, I posted on the Hamza Facebook the mantra that we're gonna sing. <clears throat> So if you look at the comment section, I posted the verse now. Create a comfortable seat and close your eyes. Take a few full inhalations, long exhalations out and just kind of settle into the flow of the breath apart from the breath providing the body with movement and stability and oxygen and helping us get rid of byproducts of metabolism. The breath is also amazing in the sense that it helps us create voice or sound. So as you sit inhaling and exhaling a few times, just kind of feel into the sense of how the breath is moving through your throat like it's a bottleneck. Not that you have to cause any tightness or restriction to the throat, just notice that it's like, it's like in a creek or a river, there's a sense of maybe a few stones or a fallen log, that this is where it narrows in a bit. And this is maybe where the flow of the breath picks up a little bit of energy, a little bit of speed, a little bit of awareness in the center area, in the throat area. Relax your shoulders, release the jaw, don't bite your teeth, relax the muscles of the face. And all of that as you feel the breath moving through the throat, through the bottleneck of the throat. And place your palms together in front of your heart. And let's chant the mantra, Jyota Sajyota Jagao. It means from the light of my heart to the light of your heart, may it be ignited. And this is the mantra that helps us open the Sarva Mandiya, the universal hall of practice, the etheric hall, the meeting point out there where we meet to practice. So even though we are respectively sitting here and you are at home, there's a place between us where we can meet and enjoy the practice. Let's chant together. Jyota se Jyota Jagao Satguru Jyota se Jyota Jagao Mirantara Ramitao Satguru Jota Se Jota Jagao He Yogeshwara He Gyaneshwara He Yogeshwara He Gyaneshwara He Sarveshwara He Parameshwara 
Exhale, release your hands down. Inhale, lift your eyes and focus. And just take your hands and move and stretch the hands and your palms a bit. And then bring your arms in front, almost like you want to play beach volley, volleyball. Volleyball. <laughs> Turn, obviously not that sporty. Um, <laughs> Turn your hands up like you want to push a beach ball. And then just connect your thumb and index finger. Good. Now you're going to take that on your throat very softly. Thumbs to the front, fingers to the back. And then you're just going to do a little bit of a lift to the back and the front. Just lifting the cylinder of the throat gently. See if you can relax the hips heavy into the ground as you do that. Very good. And then exhale and release that down. Take your left arm behind the back and your right arm to the sky. And then wrap your right hand over the head, touching just above the left ear. Inhale, lift tall. And then exhale, side bend a bit to the right. And just very gentle circle the left shoulder. It can be almost invisible to the naked eye. Relax the lift, the jaw joint on the left side. Very good. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release the arms down. Soften the shoulders by circling them about. Lift your hands for beach volley, thumbs in front, fingers to the back. Lift the cylinder of the throat. More than you really grabbing and pulling, it's almost like an awareness exercise of how to create space and elongation on each side of the neck. The sides, the front and the back. Good. Exhale, release that. Bring the right arm behind the back left arm to the sky, wrap the hand around the head, touch above the ear, take an inhale and lift tall, and then exhale and side bend to the left. Micro circle the right shoulder and just explore the possibilities of however minute the movements are, that they influence different fibers like you're a stringed instrument here and you can pluck different strings. Good, and as you exhale, release that. Circle the shoulders into freedom. Move the neck. Lift your arms. Play some beach volley. Touch the neck. Lift the cylinder of the throat on all sides. And then exhale, release that, and bring your hands onto the lower back. And just kind of do your knuckles and a little bit of rocking or massaging the lower back. Andrea, do you want to turn your back so that people can, yeah, a little bit of rubbing. Okay. We're going to then take the hands on the back, and we're going to kind of move the skin, the muscles, the power from the back to the front. So wrap things to the front. Collect at the belly and kind of hug a little bit of power around the lower belly and the pubic bone. Good. Rub the knuckles on the back. Draw from the back to the front. Collect the power on the belly a little bit low. Good. And the last one, we're going to get these bones here on the side, the hip bones. You're going to put the thumbs on the back, the fingers on the front. 
and you're going to really wrap the hip bones forward and slightly more together on the front. This is really mystical, so don't worry if it's difficult. There'll be more of this. Good. Just wrap a little to the core on the front. And then exhale, release that. Perfect. Now transition onto all fours. And as you come onto all fours, I'm going to move about a bit also. Place your hands chest width apart. And your knees and feet hip distance apart. If you're on all fours already, just let the breath flow. And think about the power moving from the back to the front. And think about releasing the neck and the shoulders a bit. But also bring some clarity and space to each side of the neck. Then as you inhale, drop your spine down and lift your tail and crown of the head for cow pose. And as you exhale, round into cat pose. Good. Follow your breath. Inhale, sway the back down. And then exhale, round the back up. Just do this four to five more times. I'm just going to... Take a tiny, take a peek here on the on the computer and uh, see if we have any comments or how is it going? Good. Okay. Good. And then the next time you exhale, you just come to neutral. Then keeping your toes and or your feet and knees hip distance apart, point your toes back so you are on top of the feet. Good. So point them back if that's possible. Take an inhalation and lean a little forward and open across the chest and the shoulders. And then as you exhale, lean your booty back towards the heels. We'll do that about five to ten times also. See if you can keep the feet and the knees hip distance apart. Inhale forward, exhale and back. And you get to do that in your own rhythm also. So just shifting back and forth. Inhaling forward, moving shoulders and neck. Exhale and sitting back. And you can simply move to all fours and then back. Or you can move slightly past all fours, a little bit more forward front. We'll do a few more. Once you get this going, it could or should feel absolutely delicious. As long as you stay within some form of linking breath and movement, and that you don't push the movements too fast or too deep. Just let it slowly evolve. Ask the body for permission. Remember, you are on the same team as your body. The body is not your adversary. The body is not out to get you. Neither are the poses. The poses, the body, and you, they are not separate. They are friends. They are in this together. And then the next time you inhale, you can lift forward up onto all fours. Good. And then tuck the toes under and inhale, push the knees off the ground and lift your hips really high in what's called the downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Walk a bit on the spot in the sense of getting some massaging into the feet, the ankles, the Achilles tendons, up the calf muscles, the back of the knees. So let's keep it in the feet, in the legs for now. Keep the breath flowing, good. And then exhale and return, turn to neutral onto all fours. Okay. I'm gonna inhale and exhale, lean the booty back towards the heels, arms out in front. And walk your arms out as wide and as far in front as they can. Well, maybe not much wider than the yoga mat, but wide. 
Good. And then inhale, forward up onto all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale in down dog, fill up the chest. Exhale, drop the knees down and shift into a child's pose. Inhale, lift up onto all fours. Exhale, downward facing dog. You can skip the middle breath there if you want to. Just on your own, move in and out a few times from down dog to child's pose, or from down dog to all fours. And keep the breath flowing. Keep the awareness of linking breath and movement together. And keep it moving into the legs, up into the thighs. And here you can start to feel a little bit more the hips, the lower back, the middle back being influenced also. Your arms and shoulders are beginning to power up a bit. Let's just do a few more. Listen to the beautiful rhythm of the breath. Or if you have some soft music playing at home, just kind of enjoy that. Good. And then the next time you exhale onto all fours. There's two options here. You can either inhale and exhale and thread the right arm under the left armpit and twist into your child's pose. Or you can come to seated and then twist and turn seated. Okay. <laughs> and we had some comments last time about the girls, about Andrea and Lisa here, that they're doing absolutely beautiful yoga, and they are. So, I mean, <laughs> don't worry if, if poses look slightly different at home. It's, 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 yoga is, um, is on a spectrum. It's like from the acrobatic, aesthetic, almost like more like a ballet or gymnastics and stuff. And then, you know, anything there where the honesty is in how you can express the pose right now. Inhale, back up out of that. And twist to the other side. I can show seated. So if you are seated, you just sit and you make a twist like this. When it comes to body, I always always have this funny experience where I'm at a dinner at a friend's place and I sit next to someone, a friend of a friend that I don't know, and they always ask me, so what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I'm a yoga teacher. And the first they do is like, they look up and down at my body and they're like, it's almost like, yeah, let's take this in. This is what a yoga teacher looks like, can look like, even a pretty awesome one. And I'm happy to, be placed in this world to like blow your mind. <laughs> Inhale, push back up onto all fours and downward facing dog. Hmm. Feel the sweetness of moving a bit here. Very nice. And then you can walk your hands back to the feet, bending your knees on the way. And just bring your hands to your hips and inhale, lift up into a standing tall posture. Good. And exhale, hands together in front of your heart. Okay. So we're going to come to a wall. I hope you can find some wall space at home. If you're pretty good at planking, you might not need it. So Lisa's going to come at the wall here facing that way. And Ray, you're going to go sideways. You're going to basically do all fours with your feet against the wall. And then you're going to push up into a downward facing dog with your toes tucked under on the floor. Good. You're going to walk the pose a little longer forward and your hands a little wider. You're going to press into a really tall downward facing dog. Press the heels into the wall 
But it's not just the pressing. It's also kind of like a draw of energy when you anchor the feet in the floor and into the wall. Then keeping that energetic anchor of your feet, inhale, draw forward into a high plank. Shoulders on top of your wrists, arms powerful, chest more powerful. And then exhale and push back into tall down dog. Inhale forward. <laughs> I'm gonna try to give you a bit of space here. And exhale back. We'll just do that a few more times. You can drop one knee to the ground for support as you lift forward into high plank. Can you, one of you show that maybe on the side? Yeah. Inhale back into downward facing dog. Sorry, exhale into downward facing dog. Let's do two more. So inhale slowly forward. Anchor the feet into the wall. Exhale and back. Inhale forward, anchor the feet into the wall. And this time stay forward for a moment. Feel free to take one or two knees down. And then move the shoulders and the neck and the head a bit. And remember to breathe, and breathe a lot. And then inhale, downward facing dog. Very good. Nice. Walk forward into a standing forward bend. Bend your knees along the way. Press your power into the ground as you bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, lift up into standing. Stretch your arms to the sky. And exhale, hands together in front of chest and heart. Good. And then relax your arms down. And just transition into lying down on the belly and draw with your face forward here. And um, I'm going to move to the side again so we get to see Lisa more on the shoulder and the neck and the chest part. Begin with two hands on top of each other, forehead on top of two hands. And just bring the breath up into the upper part of the body. How is it going at home? Is it, um, was it the right time for, for a small break on the ground? We're going to practice Shalabhasana in a few different versions. So start by reaching the arms down the sides of the body, back behind you. But it can be slightly kind of out to the side. My OECD tells me to move the clutter at the back end of the room. <laughs> Just with a bit of dynamic, inhale, lift up your arms, your chest, your face, and your legs. Good, and then as you lift your arms, pump your arms up and down a few times. Like you do a really slow flapping of the wings. It doesn't have to be the highest Shalabhasana. Good. Exhale, release down. Take now the arms out to the side and bend your elbows at a 90 degree angle. This is what we sometimes refer to as cactus arms. Good. Inhale, lift up into Shalabhasana, arms to the side, legs and chest lifting, and then also do some slow flapping up and down of your arms here and finding the muscles, find the muscle tone and contraction on the back. Don't over tighten the jaw though and then exhale, release that down. Mm. Slide the arms out in front. Really walk your fingertips out ahead. Walk them chest width apart or wider so you make some good space for the arm nerves, the shoulder, and for the breath. And then inhale, lift up into Shalabhasana, locust pose, lift your legs, lift your arms. Don't lift too tall. Don't effort so much that you bite down on the teeth. And then do a little bit of pumping here. 
So you go like, yeah, 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 yeah. do some hand movie shit. Yo, 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 yeah, yeah. And then exhale, release down. Two hands on top of each other, forehead on top of two hands, and breathe. <laughs> Andrea Neroni, you know, Andrea writes, you know, he writes, good morning, Hector. I was like, okay, thank you. And then he's like, and goddess Andrea. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> morning, <Zoe>. Morning. <laughs> Very good. Okay. And then you can slide the hands down on each side of the chest, tuck the toes under, push to all fours, and then up into a downward facing dog. And just start to walk the feet forward, but also walk the hands back towards the feet, arriving in a standing forward bend. Take the feet slightly further apart, bend the knees if you need to, and just circle the shoulder and the neck. If you feel fine in a standing forward bend, no issues with your back or whatsoever, you can grab the hands on the elbows and just really make the elbows heavy. It can sometimes help the upper back release so deliciously. Good. Then hands on your hips. Firm up that power and push down into the earth. As you inhale, lift up, stretch your arms to the sky. And as you exhale, hands together in front of your heart. Good. Relax your arms down and shake the shoulders for a moment. Take your right hand behind your back. But take your left arm to the sky. And then take the left hand behind the hip, not so much on the neck, go up on the back of the skull, and then draw your left elbow in a bit. Good. And then walk your right hand a little up between the shoulder blades. Now firm up your energy and push down into the ground to push tall up, and then back bend your upper chest a bit, pushing the head back, pushing the hand into the head, and then use the hand to lift and elongate the back of the skull. Lift and open the cylinder of the throat. And as you exhale, release that and slide the arms out. Take the left hand behind, right arm to the sky, Touch the back of the skull, wiggle the back hand a little further up, hug the right elbow into the side, and then push down into the earth to push up a little taller, good. And then lifting the cylinder of the throat, not so much pulling the neck back, don't shorten the neck, lengthen the back, the sides, and the front. And then take your spine, uh, in the chest region and back bend a little bit. It's almost like you can slide the hand a little high up between the shoulder blades. And exhale, release. Shake that into freedom. Move the neck and the shoulders. Okay. Again, from a standing position, hook your thumbs on top of each other. Use this to pull a little on the thumb. Bend your elbows to the side and take the hands behind the head. Now, the most difficult part of this pose is not to contort your face. So, blah, 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 relax the face. Good. Pull on your thumbs as you inhale and push your arms up and back. As you exhale, pull on your thumbs and draw down. This is a shout out to Barbara No in Munich or Barbara is from Australia, so Barbara know from Australia, but residing in Munich. This is a shout out to Barbara. She taught me this and I absolutely love it. It's to really engage and move the energy of the upper back. Just a few times. Good. Exhale, release. Ah, a little bit more movement. Inhale, bend your knees, sit your booty back and stretch your arms to the sky. 
And as you exhale, arms down and push your heart up. Inhale, sit deeply into Utkatasana. Exhale, push tall. Back bend slightly. Inhale. Exhale. And just in your own rhythm, do that a few times. Enjoy. This will, this, uh, generally, this will give you a little bit of a sweat, will it not? Like nothing crazy, but it's interesting when we work, particularly shoulders and neck, it's almost like we get a little bit like differently exercised than when we move legs and hips. Yeah. So it's not that cardiovascular, it's more like it does influence nerves and tissues and things. Okay, exhale and return to neutral. Perfect. Very nice. You can say, take a step to the forefront of the yoga mat and Andrea too, and see how you can navigate each other as we go for a little bit of a flow. At home, enjoy. Inhale, deep roots rise up. Exhale, fold forward. Fingertip to the ground, bend your knees as much as you need to. Inhale, chest and heart forward. Exhale, step your right foot far back. Maybe have a chair or a wall for support. And then cross your hands on your front knee and push yourself to upright in a lunge position. Perfect. Take your hands to the back. And kind of use your knuckles to move into the back a little. Good. A bit of awareness. And then use your hands with your thumbs on the back, your fingers facing forward, to kind of wrap the hip bones from the back to the front and collect a little bit of that power on the front. That should feel really awesome. So wrap the power from the back to the front. We're going to use this for poses later. So just kind of begin to become familiar with that action. One more time. Wrap from the back to the front. Sit a little deeper. Keeping the lower back curve, even though you wrap from the back to the front. Then inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. And just take one full delicious inhalation. And then exhale, fingertips to the ground. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, bow back in. Inhale, rise up to standing, stretch tall, tall, tall to the sky. Exhale, hands together in front of chest and heart. Okay, we'll do the other side. I'll, I'll slip for a second into Danish to get that wrapping. Uh, yeah. Inhale, deep roots rise up. Exhale, fold forward. Mike and Maria says Namaste, please. <laughs> Inhale, chest and heart forward. Exhale, step the left foot far back. Cross your hands on the front knee. Push to upright. Good. Steady yourself here with your power for a moment. Good. And tag så hænderne om til ryggen og brug knoverne til ligesom at mærke lidt op langs musklerne på hver sin side af lænden. Tag så hænderne med tommelfingrene, når vender bagud, fingrene frem, og så træk muskelpower fra bagsiden til front, og samle noget af den power op langs mavens midterakse, midterlinje, og kram lidt de her hofteben eller hofteknogler, kram forsiden lidt sammen. Uden at miste lændesvaret, sid en lille bitte smule dybere ned. Good. And then inhale, stretch your arms to the sky. And again, take a few full inhalations, expressing just the beauty of the moment, the beauty of the pose. In case the pose is beautiful, express the hope of the pose. <laughs> Exhale, touch fingertips down. Inhale, step forward. And exhale, bow back in. Inhale, rise up to standing, stretch tall and victoriously. Good. 
Exhale, hands together in front of chest and heart. A moment of just relaxing your, eye, your arms down. Yeah, relaxing your eyes also. <laughs> and just breathe and see where, where the exercises has taken you. Like they are guiding you along the path of a story. Like where is this story going? Your body is a biography of you. So what, where is this biography going? And like all great books or all great movies or great dramas, we hope that it isn't too straightforward. We hope that there are some interesting stories. Let's practice a few more standing poses. Inhale, deep roots rise up. Exhale, fold forward, fingertips to the ground. Inhale, chest and heart forward. Exhale, step the right foot far back. Turn the back heel in and down. Good. And as you inhale, swing up into a warrior two. Find a little bit of that power at, at the front, kind of above the pubic bone. Find and gather a little bit of the power from the back to the front and use that power to sit a little deeper down as you lift and stretch your arms more out, really expanding between the shoulder blades and the rib cage. Very good. Now keeping the basic shape and form of the pose here, but inhale and stretch your left arm to the sky. Exhale, walk your right arm down the right leg, or it's good Lisa, right arm behind the back, like we did with some of the previous poses. You can also take the top hand behind the head if you want that support and then lift and side bend and back bend. If your fingertips can easily meet each other between the shoulder blades back there, you can enjoy a Gomukhasana arm position. Mm, I don't know. You're gonna live a perfect life without doing that, by the way. Inhale, return to warrior two. You're gonna live a perfect life having done it too. Exhale, touch fingertips to the ground and lift the back heel. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, bow back in. Inhale, rise up to standing, stretch tall. Exhale, hands together. Relax the arms down and breathe. It's not the, not the most complex yoga. This is pretty common for a yoga class. But you start to feel how this is influencing your chest, your shoulders, your neck. Inhale, deep roots rise up. Exhale, fold forward as you push your feet into the ground. Inhale, chest and heart forward, hips back. Exhale, step your left foot far back with an elegant move and then turn the back heel in and down. Mm. Okay, pause here for a second, and just to get a little bit of pausing here, I just wanna remind you that as such, this is not free content. If you have Cooler Pass, you already paid for it. If not, we really want you guys at home to donate and, uh, and, and support us, but more about that towards the end. Inhale, swing up into a warrior two. Was that a nice little break? <laughs> okay, TV commercial. Hamza yeah. television, TV commercial. <laughs> do, 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 donate. <laughs> now move the power from the back to the front. If your hands is helping with that, just take your hands and move that energy. Good. Take that, hug it, and sit a little deeper. Lift taller and expand your arms like they're the wingspan of a great eagle or a big bird. Very nice. Okay, and then staying deep, lift your right arm up, left arm down the left leg for a reversed warrior or dancing warrior. 
and explore, you know, the shoulder, the chest, the neck variations of just kind of maybe taking the hand behind the head and slipping the other arm up. But if you feel that it generally disturbs the shape and form of the pose, then just stay with the shape and form of the pose that is the way you express this principle right now of integrity. How are you moving your upper body? Inhaling, exhaling, release the arms out. Touch fingertips to the ground. Lift up the back heel. Inhale, step forward. And exhale, bow back in. Nice. Inhale, rise up to standing, stretch tall, tall, tall. And exhale, hands to the back. Relax the arms down. As you close your eyes, if there's any dizziness or discomfort, you can sit on the chair also now, but or else just standing, eyes closed, or soft eyes looking into the horizon. Just take an inventory of what where you are. Keeping the breath flowing, the cylinder of the throat lifted and open, shoulders relaxing, face relaxing, just energy and, and release is begin to manifest itself. And to that you can just like uh, make a little sound as you exhale. Very good. And then go have your eyes open. And Ray, can you pick the two, two white blankets at home? You're going to get a towel or a blanket or something. You're going to basically, um, actually, can I borrow this for a moment? You can also just use a jumper or something. You're going to take a piece of fabric, so that's probably fine for both of you, and kind of make a little bit of that. You're going to take it onto the back. Lisa, will you face front? You're going to step your feet wide apart. You're going to ground the feet down. You're going to inhale and lift your chest and heart. And as you exhale, fold forward. If you need fingertips or hands on the ground, or even folding forward, supporting on a chair, you start by doing that, of course. First and foremost, I want you to feel at home in the pose. You, I want you to feel you arrive in the pose before we start to add something to it. But if you feel like, okay, I'm there, then grab the blanket and begin to stretch the blanket into the sky. You can see if you want to, what way you want to turn the hands as you grab the blanket. Yeah. So this is for a shoulder stretch. And you can move the arms a little side to side. Yeah. Just stay steady and move slow. If you want to grab hold of the fabric, the sock, or the blanket with your hands a little closer, it will tend to not necessarily increase the shoulder stretch, but the chest stretching. If you need to bend the knees and ground your energy down through the feet, you can do that also. Now come to a still point where you just kind of hold the pose. The only thing moving is your breath. Very good. And then relax the blanket to the front, on the ground, just release it. Return the hands to the hips, bend your knees a bit, inhale, push up into standing. And then start to wiggle the feet in, use a wall for support or a chair for support if you need that. Once you come back in, shake it out. Good. And turn and step to the forefront of the yoga. Make sure the yoga mat is clear for props and other things. Inhale, deep roots, rise up, really stretch your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, nice. Inhale, chest and heart forward. Exhale, step back into a downward facing dog. And then the last bit of kind of I wouldn't say the last bit of movement, but of toning and conditioning. Maybe inhale forward into a high plank. Exhale back into a down dog. And just do that three to five times. 
If you've already done enough of toning and conditioning, then just kind of, um, you know, relax into a child's pose or flat onto your baby. And what is enough? Well, one thing we need to know or notice also is that as we begin to exercise and move more energy through the body or through the tissue, we actually create quite a lot of heat in the system. And the blood system functions as a system that just transports that heat away. But each of the cells, the muscles, the nerves, everything, they have to build a heat resistance also. So we, when is enough enough? Like we need to move a bit, creating a little bit of warmth, but not so much warmth that the tissues can't handle it. Because then we'll get a lot of soreness the day after. Sometimes if people exercise really vigorously and they haven't done it for some time, it can actually bring on symptoms that feels like a little fever. Have you ever tried that? Last week. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like we want to <laughs> last week. Last week. <laughs> we want to build last yoga class. We want to build the heat resistance of the cells just very gently. So wherever that is, if it's none, if it's one, if it's five, it is what it is. It can be built. Exhale lower back down. And now you're gonna come to a seat with your legs up in front. How does it sound with the idea that, I mean, when we move and exercise, you know, apart from, you know, creating more blood and making more pathways of the nerves and stuff, we also literally teach the cells to be more heat resistant or being able to cope with more stress. Mm -hmm. So that, Sometimes if you're away from yoga, like maybe many of us will be this time, this time around, when we are away from it, we come back, we sometimes experience the first few weeks of being quite intense, but then suddenly it's like the body gets more used to it again, yeah. conditioning. Yeah. So you sit with your legs out in front. You bend your right knee in, and you bring the sole of the right foot a little closer to the bottom of the body with the right knee kind of facing out to the side. You use your fingertips to help yourself sit as upright as you can and to lift and lengthen the cylinder of the throat. Remain as upright seated as you can and then twist your left hand over to the right knee the right hand a little bit further back on the ground behind you. So left hand to the right knee, right arm behind you, and twist to the right. Don't effort a lot to sit upright. Make the sitting upright kind of more kind and soft. Instead, use some of your effort to kind of ground down into the base. Yeah. Perfect. Inhale, turn to the front. With all your energy sitting upright. Exhale, twist your right hand to the left thigh so the base doesn't change. Left hand behind you. And this for me is such a low, a great lower back twist. So I'm including this today also as a shout out to the lower back asana clinic that we had. Was that last week? Was that Saturday? So kind of last week, but some days ago. Yeah. So really feel how that moves across the lower back. Good. And then back to the front. Now turn forward to the left leg and then bring your hands onto the back. And now wrap your power from the back to the front. Particularly really wrap the right side to the front. And then bow forward and maybe touch one hand or two hands or no hands. <laughs> really wrap the power from the right side to the front. Wrap the side of the hip bone forward. Collect power at the belly and draw the belly slightly back. It's almost like you draw the belly inside. 
not that the belly necessarily really flattens or anything because that depends on tissues it's more like the energy of the belly drops into the pelvic bone I mean, no matter what our belly looks like, we all have belly energy. It's called the Jatara Prana. If you want to know more about Jatara Prana, you should look up Sebastian Bruno or uh, uh, Kimana Nichols. They are both from, along with me and Barbara, from the Thai Vedic tradition. Sebastian even has a sequence of massaging and movement that kind of influence the, the Jatana, Jatara Prana. So Sebastian, post something about it if you see this. I, I can't wait another year to get to know all of that. Good. And then inhale back up to seated. As you come to seated, don't move straight away. Just sit. And then expand, expand the legs out in front. How did that feel? A little sequence, twisting, twisting, and then forward folding. Good. Wrapping the power from the back to the front. Remember, this is Hamza television. <laughs> <laughs> Flow television. So you can just like relax. any comments or... Andrea says she's beginning to relax. <laughs> You can see Shavasana in the horizon. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bring the left leg in, right leg out. Find that tall, beautiful lift. Good. And let the lifting not be too rigid. So it's not like, you know, like, mm. it's more like a, a soft inner lift, like you're being carried by a light. And then the power is more at the base, kind of grounding down. And then twisting over to the left. Right hand on left knee, left hand behind you. Exhale, turn to the right. So keep the base, don't move the legs. Turn the left hand over to the right thigh, right hand behind you. This is one of my favorite poses to clear the lower back. I'm hoping we still have Ua, uh, my friend Ua watching from, from Silva, from Shela, south of Korea. This is such a great pose to clear stuff from your back. Good. Inhale, turn to the front, place hands on each side of the front leg and then wrap the power from the left side to the front. So you, underneath the left side there you have a bone, isn't that crazy? We have a big kind of like wing shaped bone there. How is it possible to wrap it a little to the front and then bow? Collecting all that power at the midline of the belly and then drop the energy of the belly inside, the Jatara Prana. A lot of the ideas about, you know, the Prana or the life force or whatever, these are not new ideas. I mean, from the, from the Tantric tradition, that the, the philosophy of the Tantric tradition that uh, the studio and my practice is informed by, I mean, some of those texts are fifth, 15th century so <clears throat> in the in a in the present day where things are so fast and moving you know and you know this spring this pre what was it that i saw pre-autumn collection so even the fashion industry is now not just autumn it's like pre-autumn autumn winter pre-spring spring pre-summer pre you know in a world where things move so fast but at the same time has so little history. I'm really honored to be able to share things with you that are five or 600 years old. 
I can't imagine the path that these thoughts have had to take to arrive safely to us here now. Inhale, sit back up. Extend the legs up. Put your hands behind you for a moment and like you want to sit and sunbathe. This is not necessarily that theoretical because I imagine for Easter here <laughs> in the city we get to go to some verandas or balconies or maybe some isolated area in the park and just kind of drink in the sun. And then lie down on the back. Just a few poses on the back. Start by bending the knees, feet on the ground. Lisa, could I maybe ask you to turn? And then as you bend the knees, feet on the ground, also for a moment, bend your elbows. And then press the elbows down a bit. Press the length of your arm bone down and your shoulder down. Then fill up the chest with breath. Good. And make a small curve to the neck by just tilting the nose half a centimeter back. Good. Then connect to the ground with your power. Inhale, lift your hips off the ground into a shoulder bridge. Good. And breathe here, inhaling and exhaling into the chest region. Make sure the windpipe and the throat feels free. So don't choke your breath here. Yeah, relax the jaw. And then for the last moment, extend your arms into the sky. Good. Just listen to my voice rather than turning your head. And as you lift your arms into the sky, press the back of the shoulders down. Like you just want to give the ground a little press down with the back of your arm bones and shoulders. Even softly the back of the skull pressing down. Remember those poses where you had a hand behind the head and you were pressing back. And then exhale, lower the arms down. Lower the booty down. And extend the legs out on the ground. And just turn the palms facing up. And kind of feel the neck, the shoulders, the energy, the clearing of tensions, the relaxation happening. It's like there are moments of healthy self-effort. And then after that, there's just moments of surrender. Let's do that one more time. Bend the knees. This time just keep the arms down, inhale, lift up the hips and keeping the arms down or if you feel comfortable move the arms in underneath a bit and see if the fingers can interlace but you don't have to and then give it a lift into the sky expressing the pose to the fullest but remember expressing a pose to the fullest is not pushing the architecture or the shape of the form into such an extreme that you can't breathe anymore or that you don't feel at home. So shift into a shape and form of the pose where you're thinking, ah, oh, I've never been more me or more at home here in the expression of the pose. This is you. And then exhale, release the arms and drop the booty back down. Very Extend the legs out. Another moment of relaxing. We're kind of moving a little bit towards the end now. Just soften the jaw, shoulders. We'll just finish with a relaxing twist here. Bring the right knee in, left hand on the right knee. Right hand a little out to the side. And then inhale, exhale, and roll the right knee over to the left. But then roll back onto the back again. Roll out of the pose. Inhale, exhale, roll into the pose again. And just do that a few times back and forth. And then eventually, 
It's like my dogs, when they walk around, you know, to get the real perfect posture, or real like, ah, then it's there. So as you rub in and out a few times, you kind of test it out. And then at one point you go like, okay, here it is. And you're like, ah, and you feel your way into a universal stretch. Rather than focusing on the leg is doing, I really want you to feel the chest and rib cage and shoulder and neck. So favor the placement, favor the chest stretching, favor the shoulder release, favor turning of the head. A little bit less important what the lower back is doing. A little bit less important what the lower body is doing. Exhale, roll onto the back. And then just as beautifully on the other side. Extending the right leg out, bring the left leg in, right hand across. Roll in and out a few times. And even now, um, Feel more into what has this created for you. Remember that some of these processes, they are self-reinforcing. So it's like more blood flow comes into the area. Then you can relax. That helps circulate more energy into the muscles. The tired muscles get rejuvenated. And a sense of like tired muscles being rejuvenated, maybe they can just go like, okay, soften a bit. So how does it feel and how can that sensation create more of its own energy as a kind of a cascade of processes that are set in motion that helps the upper body just release and heal. And as you exhale, roll onto the back. Finish with just hugging both knees to the chest softly or a little bit side to side. Grab in a blanket. And we just want to finish with a very, very simple upper back therapeutics. You take any form of blanket here, maybe like this, but you want to unfold it a bit so that eventually when you roll it up, it doesn't actually become too high. And you make a roll. I'm actually doing your blanket here. Oh. I think this could be fine for my back, but you can also go, you know, like this, so it's not that rolled up. Place that across the yoga mat. And then it's here at the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. If I go a little bit like this, I get a sense of like, there's an area of my spine back there, and I put that on the, over the blanket as I lie down. Mm. Okay, take some time to wiggle into this pose, because with everything else we've done, with the strengthening, the conditioning, the stretching, you know, this could potentially be a time, a golden opportunity for really letting this pose enter into the deep tissues of the upper, of the mid-back, or the, the back of the diaphragm. In what way can this pose serve you or help you bring healing to the upper body, the upper back, shoulders and neck? If you need to, at any given time, you can just kind of exhale out the mouth and practice a bit of surrender, a bit of letting go.
from there just roll to the side, push slowly up to seated. Take the blanket out. And instead you're gonna make the blanket into a bit of a pillow for the neck. So maybe like this. You're gonna lie down and you're gonna pull that in nicely to the neck. It feels and then you're going to extend out. And you guys at home, it's just time to lie down for a few minutes. And there's really, there's a reason why every single yoga class will conclude with this relaxation. It is really the time where mm, everything finds each other. It's like you cook a dish, you add the ingredients. But unless you give it that finishing slow simmer, it just won't bring the flavors together or bring the flavors to the surface. So think of your Shavasana as a soft, slow simmer. It just brings all the flavors out of your practice. We're going to leave you now. Um, we're going to leave you to have a great day. We're going to leave you to move about. Uh, this is a filmed, live streamed on a Tuesday here in Copenhagen but it will be on the website, so you can watch it later. But at least for those of you watching live, I'm going to wish you a great Tuesday. And also remind you that this is our job, this is the way that the studio functions these days. So if this has any value, even if it doesn't have value for you and you still participate, sadly the way things work is that you pay, <laughs> you donate. And the mobile pay is 80, one zero five, and if you are abroad and you need to use PayPal, it's soham at hamsayoga.dk. It's my PayPal. Have a great day out there, and in the studio here, good night for the next five minutes. I love that we get to leave you with the picture of just what a what an asana clinic looks like to my students.